So I spoke to 20 students about their grad school interview experience, and I selected 10 questions that seem to be a common experience for most of these students. That is what I will talk about in this video. So stay with me. Welcome back to this video. I'm Dr. Babati Deojo. And in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 questions that uh, most students get in a grad school interview, either with an individual professor or a group of professors in a graduate admissions committee. Now, apart from these 10 questions, I also have two bonus questions at the end for people who might be interested in, you know, teaching opportunities in grad school. Also, you may have noticed that we have been talking about interviews for the past couple of weeks now, and um, I intentionally made this the last video uh, because I would have to refer to some of my previous videos for answers to some of these specific questions that I'm going to mention today. So without wasting time, let's get into it. Now, the first question is a classic question that mostly opens an interview, which is the classic, tell me about yourself. But how do you do this like a scholar? You know, how do you do this in academia? I've talked about this exclusively in a short video that you can see here on my screen right here. So please, if you have not seen that, uh, please see that uh, particular video. And for each of the videos I'm going to refer to, apart from seeing them on the screen, you would also see them in the description below. Now, the second question is, tell us about your research experience. Now, this can come in various ways. I've seen uh, situations where students were asked to just talk about one particular research on their CV. So, they might just point to a particular research on your CV, a publication on your CV, and say, oh, talk to us about that research. It sounds interesting. So you should be able to talk about your research like a professional as well. And how do you do that? I've talked about talking about your past research experience in this video uh, that is displaying on my screen right now. Now, I've said before that talking about your research it's all about knowing how to arrange sections of this particular discussion uh, when you're talking about past research. So it's not really about doing one of the best research, you know, ever, uh, because they know as um, new or prospective graduate students, you probably don't have a lot of exposure to top-notch research uh, facilities or research projects. And um, what you want to do is you want to be well organized. And I've talked about that in the video uh, that I referred to. So please check that out. So the third question is um, another interesting one. Why do you need a master's or a PhD? Now, again, I've talked about this in a previous video. So please see what's displaying right now on my screen or in the description below for that video. And uh, apart from that, I've also made uh, sample answers on my Instagram page, on the Best Man Academy Instagram page specifically. And I think it's also on the Best Man Academy Facebook page. So you can check that out as well. Now, the next question is an exciting one, which goes like this. What can you bring to our program? Or sometimes you will hear, what can you bring to our lab? Or what can you bring to our group? Um, in any case, I've um, explained that um, to answer this kind of question, you just need to think about, you know, soft skills. So it's just a means of marketing yourself perfectly for that position. So what you want to do is to see my previous video on where I talked exclusively on how to answer this question about what can you bring to the team. Now, the next question is an easy one, 
which goes like this. What is your plan after your master's or after your PhD? Now, um, this is an easy one because if you just have to be honest with them, um, you should have an idea of what you want to do after your degree or with your degree. Uh, so if you want to stay in academia, for example, if you are a PhD student and you want to be a professor, please be honest with them. Or if you are a master student and you want to, you know, do a PhD later, they usually appreciate that. So please tell them what exactly you want to do. And if you want to go to the industry, that's always uh, fine as well. But the bottom line is you need to know what you want to do with your degree after your studies. Now, the next question is an interesting one as well, which is why did you choose this university or why did you choose this department? Sometimes it will come as um, how did you get to know our program or how did you get to learn about our program or about our university? Now, if you have been following this channel, you would know that I discussed this question when we were uh, talking about um, the statement of purpose. So this is one of the questions you need to answer when you are writing your statement of purpose uh, about how you discovered or how you got to know about that specific program in that university. And I talked about uh, this specific question in this video uh, that is displaying on my screen right now and you can also see it in the description below. Now the next question is an easy one which is what do you do currently and why do you want to leave? So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. That uh, is just a straightforward answer and why you want to leave uh, should normally be tied to the purpose of um, you know why you want to really get that particular degree so it's an easy one to answer now the next question is what do you consider difficult in research again that uh, seems like an easy question uh, all you have to do is to be honest about what you think has been difficult in the past for you, but not only that, talk about how you try to overcome that challenge. For example, for me, when I um, started grad studies, writing was a bit challenging. So writing is my challenge and how do I overcome that is to try to write more. You know, you, you learn by doing so. If you write more, maybe blog posts or short articles, you get better at writing over time. So that could be an answer. So when you talk about your challenge, immediately follow that up with how you try to cope or to overcome that challenge. The next question is, which of our current projects or research interests are you most interested in and why? So. The assumption here is you've already read or have you already have some understanding of what we do in our lab right or in our school or in our department so we are training to you that um, you know we you we already have some projects which should have been displayed on the department's website or the professor's uh, web page as well so they are training to you that which of these projects do you think you are most interested in and why so you should understand the kind of lab that you're going to read the uh, web page of the particular professor you are having an interview with and um, know the kind of research you would probably be interested in when you get to that university now this is mostly common for US professors who usually have a project on ground before looking for students. Uh, for other places, I understand that um, sometimes they require you to bring research ideas uh, for your PhD. So if that's the case, this question 
might not be for you. And the last question is, what role did you play in your publication? So in this case, they might point to a specific publication in your CV uh, and, you know, just ask you to talk to them about the role that you played. So if you actually did collect some data, you know, maybe you did some of the bench work or the field work, whatever the case is for you, please talk about what you did, explain uh, in details what you did and um, make sure you don't overstretch uh, your role. Make sure you don't tell them you, you know, you used one equipment that you did not really use. You know, just be honest. They don't, they are not looking for experts, but they are looking for people who are mostly willing to learn. So just tell them what you did in your publication. Now to my bonus question that I talked about at the start of the video. Now this question is mostly for people who, you know, might be interested in teaching, like I said, and in most cases, uh, or in some cases, some departments usually have funding only in form of teaching assistantships. So they want to know, you know, uh, one or two things about the kind of students they are admitting and um, how they would handle teaching when they get to grad school. So the first bonus question is, what is your teaching philosophy? So generally, how do you handle our teaching? What's like your overall approach to instruction, in-class instruction, or sometimes uh, leading discussion sections? So um, what's your teaching philosophy? Prepare to answer those kind of questions if you are going to a department that appreciates or values teaching. The second bonus question is, how do you motivate students? So be prepared to tell them how you motivate students to learn. And the most important thing is you should be able to give examples of how you have done this in the past. So that is all I have for you. All the videos that I referenced in this video will be in the description below. So check them out. And like I said in one of my uh, first video on interviews, this interview, especially if you're coming to the United States, will mostly be a conversation, uh, you know, between colleagues. So you are like the junior colleague, they are like the senior colleague. So you don't have to be scared at all. Okay, just prepare well and uh, tell them what you know. They are not looking for experts, but people that are organized and are willing to learn. That is important. So that's all I have for you. I'll see you in the next video.